Welcome to the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Christian Research Institute President Hank Hanegraaff. Our mission at CRI is not only to equip you with sound biblical teaching and spiritual discernment, but to help you become a winsome and fruitful witness of Jesus Christ. Because the credibility of our faith hinges on the answers we provide to life's biggest questions, there's often not a second chance to get those answers right. If you are struggling with a question and an answer has been elusive, please call in now at 888-ASK-HANK. That's 888-275-4265. For more information about CRI and the Bible Answer Man broadcast, go to our website at equip.org. And now, here's Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you very much, Randy. You can also write us at Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28. Two seven one. Eat, fast, feast. Available for those who support the ministry. Check it out on the web at equip.org. But also available a subscription to the Christian Research Journal right now. The journal that you will receive is a special double issue of the Christian Research Journal. One of the articles in that in that special edition of the Christian Research Journal has to do with John Chrysostom. And uh, this is about something that I've talked about many times on the Bible Answer Man broadcast, and that is the fact that we are, uh, well, like pygmies standing on the shoulders of giants. And so this article on, on John Chrysostom, the golden-mouthed preacher, this article by Bradley Nassif is worth the price of subscription. It truly is. In the Orthodox tradition, John Chrysostom is regarded as the greatest of all preachers. In fact, the Sunday worship service is known as the divine liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. I think of what Thomas Aquinas said. He said, if there was only one book to read outside of the Bible itself, it would be John Chrysostom's commentary on the Gospel of St. Matthew. John Calvin said that John Chrysostom excels all the ancient writers of history. In point of fact, Calvin himself adopted uh, Chrysostom's method of preaching book by book, the whole counsel of God. So if you're not familiar with John Chrysostom, he was born in the 4th century. He died in the early 5th century. He was 18 when Athanasius the Great codified the Christian canon, the 27 books of the Christian New Testament canon. Something interesting about Chrysostom, something that I resonate with, is that he memorized the entire New Testament. And he did that in a two-year period of his life. How did he do that? Well, he committed himself to self-denial, to prayer, to fasting, and to memorizing, meditating, and mining the Word of God. That became a part of the canvas of his consciousness. And John lived very much like we're living now. He lived during a time when Christians in Antioch were largely nominal. They were very worldly. This was a time in which cults like Arianism and Apollinarianism was, uh, were, were flourishing. Arianism, of course, denying the deity of Jesus Christ, but the Apollinarians, they denied the full humanity of Christ. Two errors. Uh, on either side of the coin. Chrysostom expounded brilliantly on Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of all the types and shadows that preceded him. Jesus was the fulfillment of the law in the prophets. There was nothing politically correct about Chrysostom. When Empress Eudoxia erected a silver statue of herself, that was quite near to the church where Chrysostom served. 
he preached a sermon. In fact, it was a sermon reminiscent of his namesake, John the Baptist. And as such, he was tried at a place called the Oak. This was in the year 403. And then he was exiled. Eventually, Eudoxia had John marched to a very slow and painful death on a 400-mile trek to the Black Sea. And think about what his dying words were. His dying words were, Glory be to God for all things. It's interesting to me that 33 years after his death, Emperor Theodosius, who was the son of Eudoxia, publicly asked for forgiveness for the sin of his mother. I'll always remember his words concerning the rigors of ministry. John Chrysostom said, preaching improves me. When I begin to speak, weariness disappears. When I begin to teach, fatigue too disappears. And I suppose a lot of uh, priests listening in, pastors listening in, speakers listening in can resonate with those very words. When I begin to speak, weariness disappears. When I begin to teach, fatigue too disappears. So I thought there were a couple of lessons to learn from John of Antioch or John Chrysostom. He wasn't called John Chrysostom until I think it was about 150 years after he died. And he was named that because Chrysostom really means golden mouth. And he was considered uh, the apex of speakers. He was a great rhetorician. He was a great speaker. But the reason I bring him up, and I think the reason we brought him up in this series on standing on the shoulder of giants is that there's so much we can learn from him. I think, first of all, we can learn that theology must always be rooted in Scripture because theology is the study of God. And the Bible is the primary source of Christian truth about the very one who knit us together in our mother's wombs. I think, secondly, we can develop rhetorical and philosophical skills in the battle for life and truth. Not only can we, but we must. When the famous pagan orator and rhetorician Libanius was on his deathbed. He was asked, who would take the place of John Chrysostom? You know what he said? He said, it would be John if only the Christians had not stolen him from us. In other words, if only the Christians hadn't stolen him uh, from the pagans. And then I think it's interesting to note, and maybe this would be a third point, Maybe the most important point, we can learn the lesson of John's unyielding courage. Without so much as blanching, he spoke truth to power, even at the cost of his own life. He is willing to speak the truth no matter what the price and we as pygmies standing on the shoulders of giants like John Chrysostom can learn a lot from that very, very significant reality. And he was not the only great Eastern father, along with Basil the Great and Gregory Nanzianzus, Athanasius the Great. He is considered one of the greatest of all Eastern fathers. And uh, I am so grateful every single Lord's Day for the opportunity to once again be brought in direct contact with his understanding of Scripture, with his divine liturgy. John Chrysostom said many, many memorable things, including my work. My work is like that of a man who is trying to clean a piece of ground into which a muddy stream is constantly flowing. 
So we talked about the futility sometimes that you feel in ministry. You clear the ground and before long there are weeds back in the patch. But we must never fail to continue to do the work of our Lord because a great treasure awaits each one of us. Only one life soon will be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last in eternity. We will reap the rewards of our labors, even if we pay the ultimate price, like John Chrysostom did. We're coming to a station break, and I will get to your calls. The number to dial, triple eight, ask Hank. Numerically, triple eight, two, seven, five, 42, 65. My thanks to all of you who stand shoulder to shoulder with me in the battle for life and truth. You're touching the lives of people all across the world, not only for time, but most certainly for eternity as well. The book, Eat, Fast, Feast, Heal Your Body While Feeding Your Soul is a true gift to Christians eager to grow spiritually as they get healthier physically. J.W. Richards has put together a six-week plan to promote healing the whole of you so that you can make 2020 one of your best years ever, physically, mentally, and most of all, spiritually. To receive your copy of Eat, Fast, Feast, Heal Your Body While Feeding Your Soul, A Christian Guide to Fasting, simply call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to the ongoing work of the Christian Research Institute. 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org. The Bible Answer Man broadcast will return in just a few moments. The Christian Research Journal is CRI's award-winning magazine, combining eye-catching design with well-researched articles that equip you to exercise truth and experience life. Here's what's in the current special double issue of the Christian Research Journal. Because questions remain about the earliest moments of the universe, scientists offer speculative alternatives to our universe having an actual beginning. Nevertheless, the science that is known to be true provides abundant evidence that the universe came into being a finite time ago, just as the Bible teaches. Other topics include how Dante's Inferno can help explain hell to modern seekers, Christian apologetics in a nutshell, John Chrysostom, the Golden Mouth Preacher, Christian Imagination and the Problem of Horrendous Evil, and much, much more. Start your subscription to the Christian Research Journal today by calling 888-7000-CRI, 888-7000-CRI, or subscribe online at equip.org. That's equip.org. The complete Bible Answer Book Collector's Edition Revised and Updated is a comprehensive collection of the most often asked as well as most difficult questions Hank Hanegraaff has received in nearly three decades of hosting the Bible Answer Man broadcast. This expanded edition contains new entries, leading readers to a better understanding of God and our relationship to Him in Jesus Christ. The complete Bible Answer Book Collector's Edition revised and updated is a comprehensive, handy, and attractive volume that you will return to again and again. Take your exploration of God's Word to new heights and receive the revised and updated Complete Bible Answer Book as our thank you for your gift by calling 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org. Like millions concerned about their health, Hank Hanegraaff had never really known which diet plan to trust, but he's found the secret to healing the whole of you, body, soul, and spirit. Eat Fast Feast, Heal Your Body While Feeding Your Soul by J.W. Richards reveals that God is interested in more than just our physical health. He's interested in healing the whole of us. Eat Fast Feast outlines a plan found in the ancient Christian practice of intermittent fasting that can help you experience deeper life in Christ. To receive Eat Fast Feast, Heal Your Body While Feeding Your Soul, a Christian guide to fasting, simply visit equip.org. That's equip.org. And make a gift in support of the ongoing work of the Christian Research Institute. Or call 888-7000-CRI. That's 888-7000-CRI.
Well, let's return to your host, Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you, Randy. And let's go right to our callers. The number to dial, triple eight. ask Hank. Jerry in Richmond, Virginia, listening on Sirius XM 131. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Mr. Hank. I appreciate you taking my call today. My pleasure. So I had heard a theory talking about how Satan hates humans, and that's, I guess, not a theory, but that the original fruit of the Garden of Eden had something to do with intercourse between Satan and um, Adam and Eve, and that he, sh- he was trying to corrupt the bloodline to prevent uh, any savior of humanity. And I just was wondering, is any of that, uh, any, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Satan was certainly trying to corrupt, but uh, this kind of teaching uh, smacks of uh, someone that's on late night television, or I think in the early morning hours, if you're if you're an insomniac, uh, named Arnold Murray, who teaches this doctrine called the Serpent Seed Doctrine, and this is the idea that Eve had sex with a snake. And as a result, you have a contaminated bloodline because you have Cain, the Cainites, you know, and and it's a, it's a whole crazy conspiracy theory and, and a lot of other things that are taught. And this is one of the reasons that I think it's so important for us to always go back to the early church. Not only did the early church give us the Bible, but they gave us a right understanding of biblical truth. And the biblical truth about the tree of knowledge is that it is symbolic of choice. It is a symbol of choice between obedience and disobedience, between majestic revelation and moral relativism, between God's truth and my truth. And of course, there were two trees in the Garden of Eden. One was the tree of knowledge, and the other was the tree of life. And um, in my book, Truth Matters, Life Matters More, I talk about how Ephraim the Syrian, and I think we're celebrating him as a saint today, but Ephraim the, the Syrian talked about how paradise occupies and operates as a liminal space. It's a part of the created cosmos that was intended to serve as a venue for divine and human communion. And as such, paradise is special. It's set apart in relationship to the rest of creation. So you can imagine the Edenic garden is a mountain, kind of like the mountains of Zion, mountains that dwarf all other mountains. And you think about the paradisical peak, it reached to the very to the very habitation of God. And then the tree of knowledge planted halfway up the mountain, the tree of life located with the Shekinah at the mountain peak. Now the reason for that picture as Ephraim the Syrian painted it is that if Adam and Eve had rejected the serpent, if they had rejected Satan, they could have eaten from the tree of life and the tree of knowledge would not have been withheld from them. Why? Because from the one, they would have gained infallible knowledge. And from the other, they would have received immortal life. In other words, they would have acquired divinity alongside their humanity. Instead, of course, they were exiled from the Edenic garden and from traversing the slope that led upward to the peak of deification. Of course, when I'm talking about deification, I don't mean that we become what God is in his essence, but we become God-like. We, we take on the energies of God. They affect us so that we can not only live a life that is life to the full, but we can affect others and transform the world. Fantastic. And yeah, you actually hit a nail on the head with where the source was. It was the the Shepherd's Chapel that I had heard it. So you, yeah, perfect. I really appreciate that. You got it. Thank you so much for, for calling. And there's so much that we could say about Arnold Murray. Uh, it, it's not only that teachers like Arnold Murray uh, come up with all kinds of novel theories that lead people astray. But Arnold Murray, 
goes so far as to deny the Trinity, to claim that Christ and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. And people are listening to this in the wee hours of the morning, and they're being bedeviled, if you will, by this kind of rhetoric. Uh, he, he teaches annihilationism. He, he teaches all kinds of weird and wacky doctrines. Oftentimes it's the skin of the truth stuffed with a great big lie. And when you see that skin of the truth stuffed with the lie, it looks like a shining bobble. You want to bite into it. But when you do, you find that it is poisonous. Of course, if we know the truth, we recognize a beauty that comes from Scripture. The beauty that in the temptation and obedience on the mountain in the wilderness, Jesus Christ rehearsed the events. He reversed the effects of Adam's temptation. He reversed the effects of Adam and Eve and their disobedience on the mountain of paradise. He rehabilitated human free will. And he reiterated the proper paradigm for its use. It was in the death of Jesus on the cross. It was in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead that he was able to return Adam and the rest of humanity to the life of Eden. And that's why the wisest man who ever lived rendered wisdom the fruit of the righteous and longing fulfilled. He called it the proverbial tree of life, a tree that finds ultimate root, if you look at the Bible holistically, in two gardens. Why do I say that? Because in the anti-historical state, the tree of life stood at the apex in the Edenic garden. In the post-historical state, the tree of life is rooted in an eternal garden. In fact, this is a memorial to paradise regained. And that's why Jesus said to him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And that means that we can experience deification not only in this life, but we can experience deification throughout eternity. Now, I talk about this life. In this life, there's a tree of life, and we can partake of that tree of life. It stands on Golgotha's hill. Golgotha's hill is the fulcrum of human history. Because on it, Jesus stretched one hand toward the Edenic garden, the other toward the eternal garden. The deification that the first Adam couldn't reach anymore, the second Adam touched in his place. And so we might well say that the cross of Christ is the way forward the way forward toward deification, because on it hangs the Eucharistic bounty. The assembly of saints bears resemblance to paradise, something we remember today because we remember Ephraim the Syrian. On that tree are plucked the fruit of him who gives life to all. On it, we find the cluster of grapes to be the medicine of immortality or the medicine of life. This is one of the reasons that I am so conscious every day of the beauty of Eucharist, the beauty of Mass, the beauty of the Lord's Table, the beauty of the Lord's Supper, because properly understood, properly rendered a sacrament, properly partaken of, you are able to, in essence, partake of the tree of life. This is the chief instrument 
of Christian divinization. It is the chief instrument by which we are transformed from one glory to another. This is central to the Christian message. This is my body, this is my blood, said Jesus Christ. His pure body, his precious blood, it is for the remission of our sins and for immortal life, but it is for life that is life to the full in the present as well. Well, an important uh, takeaway from a question where someone is uh, preaching heresy, I think sometimes it's important to give the other side of the coin, which is truth. We are to speak truth to power. We are to speak truth in place of heresy. And I thank all of you that make that possible for me uh, right here at the Christian Research Institute, the Bible and Men broadcast our podcast and our outreaches around the world. Thanks for standing with us. Look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's broadcast. Thanks for tuning in to the Bible Answer Man broadcast. Our website, equip.org, has an abundance of resources to sharpen your discernment skills and help you grow in life and truth. We provide books, videos, and informative articles. You can also listen to the broadcast live, download archived programs, get answers to pressing Bible questions, follow our blog, or connect with us via social media. All this and more at equip.org. Again, the address is equip.org. The Bible Answer Man broadcast is supported solely by listeners like you. We're on the air because life and truth matter. The Christian Research Journal is CRI's award-winning magazine, combining eye-catching design with well-researched articles that equip you to exercise truth and experience life. Here's what's in the current special double issue of the Christian Research Journal. Dante's Inferno can help explain hell to modern seekers. Counter to our intuitions, Dante depicts sinners as eager to enter the Inferno, for hell promises to give them exactly what they want, their sin and themselves forever. Other topics include, did the universe really have a beginning? Christian apologetics in a nutshell. Christianity and the origins of hospitals and modern medicine. The indomitable human spirit of Philip K. Dick. Why arguments over fetal pain capability ultimately miss the mark in the abortion debate and much, much more. Start your subscription to the Christian Research Journal today by calling 888-7000-CRI, 888-7000-CRI, or subscribe online at equip.org. That's equip.org.